most times people that cannot take being corrected are not ready for this space. Mm. Um, this space requires you to not only take a step back out of your own perspective and to look at other people's perspectives, mm -hmm. but it also requires you to accept when you're wrong, forcefully most times, yep. and accept the fact that regardless of if you're right, you're wrong, no matter how you deliver it, some people is just not going to rock with you. Yeah. Period. Yep, that's so, a fact. So um, I would, fact. I would really just, I would, I would set up the test. If there was somebody that I rocked with and I was cool with for real, I would set up the test to see if they were in a space where they were ready. And if they're not in the space that's ready, I still wouldn't discourage them because if we be in a book, I've been in this, I've been in this space since I was 18. I'm 34, mm. almost 35, mm -hmm. and I'm just now grasping this in the last 12 months. Yep. If we're being honest, all the conversation that we had prior to recording, I wouldn't have been ready to meet you and your wife before last year yeah. honestly really i don't feel like so why you say that um because i wasn't in a space where i could be corrected i wasn't in a space where i could accept being corrected i wasn't in a space where i could accept um even just sit comfortably with knowing that people are hell bent on not agreeing with me yeah i'm cool with that now that type of stuff used to disrupt my energy my husband would tell you like it'd throw my energy off completely I, if my energy is thrown off, it's not because of nothing that happened online. Yeah. And prior to probably about last year, that wasn't going. That was. It was difficult for me um, earlier, a few years ago, I would say. Probably about four years ago because that's when I started. My journey online was different because I was documenting my life and I was using it as leverage to continue to do what it is that I wanted to do from a corporate perspective. And, and you know, it just kind of took off and took on a life of its own, right? So... A lot of my journey was documenting what it was being a father, okay. you know, bringing her to work with me. <clears throat> but I was also documenting like, you know, how to be successful in certain things and real estate. And, you know, I was showing my bank accounts and all of that stuff. Right. Just because I'm a very transparent person and I still do that today. But what I didn't realize was that once it really took off and based off of some of the people that I was associated with online sometimes, Man, people was trying to find out where my daughter was going to school, mm -hmm. and I was I was ready to crash out at different points. You know what I'm saying? That's how it took me a minute to adjust to that because I realized that I couldn't fight everybody online. So I didn't have to adjust to that part because I was already raised to be very secretive in regards to certain things. Because my mom and my my dad is like one of the most OG people you ever yeah, yeah. So when it came to posting my house or posting schools or even taking the same route home or um, even honestly getting mail to my house, yep. I don't have to worry about that because oh. I already was prepared for that. I had to switch up. Oh yeah, no, I don't even even <clears throat> when I get when I get DoorDash deliveries, I be getting them under complete different names. My Amazon is under a whole like whole different names like you my you that type of stuff yeah. i'm i i'm already i'm two steps ahead of that between my husband and my dad i'm we always two two steps ahead of of protecting ourselves like even i had a friend one time where it was like it was almost an argument because she took a picture outside of standing outside of my house yep people wanted, don't get that they don't they don't it, get that yep. she wanted to post a picture and she posted the picture and i'm like hey i need you to take that down yep because people can put two and two together easily that you were at my house that's outside of my house and you don't have to worry about somebody possibly mm -hmm. finding the house i do and how my anxiety is set up i'm gonna be sitting at this door every night just until, no that's late. real you know that's real saying? so people that that aren't inside of the situation probably don't think about it but honestly you know to to your viewers Think about what y'all posting on social media, posting the school, the kids school, tagging every location, mm -hmm. um, even like for homecomings and proms and you guys are posting and it's like outside the house with the, with the street address in it. Y'all got to think smarter than that because you might not be in that lifestyle and you might not be moving crazy or, you know, foul, but somebody close to you might be and you might be the one that's findable because of them. Yep. And it's funny because I had to take more of a, a street approach. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't just, hey, I ain't, I ain't involved in nothing street related right now. So mm -hmm. I ain't got to worry about it. Now I was starting to think of, man, listen, we to move. I didn't switch up my addresses. I don't let nobody take pictures in certain places. And and again, a lot of times they don't get it because they not in it. Mm -hmm. But then it's like an uncomfortable conversation sometimes that you got to have with people simply because they don't know. Yeah. And they don't know that it be people that catch every single thing that you do. And it's people that's that's waiting. And they waiting. That. Yeah. It's people that done lost their life like that though. Yeah. Pop smoke. 
Postmo exactly. literally posted. He yep. he accidentally yep. posted his street address in one of his pictures, and that's how they found where he was staying at. Yep, absolutely. I'm sure that was probably on his head, regardless. But that was definitely the the probably the the icing on the cake for them. Like people that's not in it don't think about it. And the best thing for people like us is to make sure that people that are within our village are considerate. Yeah. And even if they don't understand it, it's not for something. It's not something for you to understand. Just consider it and yeah. consider me in this moment. Consider my how I feel. Consider the fact that this is my my space that I'm allowing you to be in, and you're gonna respect my boundaries or you won't be here. Yep. I even I even stopped uh, posting like certain stuff on my stories when I'm in certain spaces until after I left. Oh yeah, I don't oh yeah, no, I'm not posting anything until I'm until I'm gone. But that wasn't nothing that I thought about when I first started getting into it. You know I, what I'm saying? Yeah, not, uh, yeah, see that being a buck with you, I thought about all that before I got into it. My name not Randy Rosario. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. But see, <laughs> but see, but here is the thing. Even before I got married, Rosario I came into it. A, Rosario's a made up name that I pulled out of thin air, bro. But I came into it like with my real name cuz see my thing was I right, look I was always looking at the long term, right? And when I was studying people, I was studying the people that wasn't even in certain spaces, right? I was mm -hmm. studying like the financial people, the the Dave Ramseys and all of these type of people, right? So mm -hmm. when I was looking at them, I said, oh, okay, this is how they market themselves. They use their real name. When, when people look me up, I want them to find me based off of who it is that I am, right? Mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, man, they start trying to search court records and shit. And yeah. I'm like, what the you fuck? You can search is a court record on? for Randy Rosario if you want to. That's, that's <laughs> like searching a court record for Minnie Mouse. No, baby. but that's smart. That's smart as but hell. That really goes back to tell you, show you how long I've been doing this and how long yeah. I've wanted to be who I am today. I came up with the name Randy Rosario when I was 16 years old. Yeah. Because when I was in high school, our teachers put so much emphasis on. Hey, when you guys are on social media, when you're on that Facebook and on that MySpace, remember, once you post mm -hmm. it, you post it. If a job is looking for you, they're going to be able to find you. So my my first name is Randy. Yeah. Y'all all know my last name now because my I, I have my husband's last name, Maples. But Rosario is literally a name that I put out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. My Hispanic, uh, I'm sorry, my Caribbean Latina uh, family name is Gomez. Yeah. So Rosario, it just sounded good. Randy Rosario. Well, I mean, once you get to a certain level, then... Eventually, somebody because I realize there's people from high school that be watching and they be like, "Oh man, that's Anton." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it just kind of came with the territory. Even a bit that, earlier. though, that <laughs> I had people. So I experienced uh, a, a big loss in 2011. Mm -hmm. I had people from high school that sent me cards and flowers. That's crazy. To Randy Rosario, that's and I'm like, crazy. "Cool, we gonna we gonna take it and run with it." And yeah. I've never looked back on it. Like I've. The per what I'm doing right now and what I'm on right now is what I've always wanted to do. Yeah. 